said the second video on the history of Irish League of Doo would be Cliftonville. Change of plan. Derry. Before Derry City, there were two other clubs in Derry. There was St Columns Court FC, and they were formed in 1886. And there was St Columns Hall, and that's St Columns Hall behind us, and it's formed in 1890. So I'm guessing here, because I can't find any information, but I'm guessing that St Columns Hall is related to St Columns Hall Football Club. We'll go with that there. So let's talk about St Columns Court FC first of all. St Columns Court were founded in 1886, so this is well before Derry City. In 1888, they joined the IFA. They played Irish League for one season in the 1901-1902 season, and they finished bottom. They reached the semi-final Irish Cup twice, and they played a place called Celtic Park, and we'll go there shortly. So we've also got St Columns Hall Football Club, and they were formed in 1890, four years after St Columns Court. In 1893, they changed their name to St Columns Hall Celtic. Okay, it's dairy, dairy football is dug into this here. I mean, what is going on? Anyway, in 1897, 1898, they got to the final of the Irish Cup. Now, they weren't in the Irish League at this stage. They got to the final Irish Cup. They were played in the, the North West Intermediate. Anyway, they got to the final and they were beat 2 0 by Linfield. So then they changed their name to Derry Celtic. You'll have heard Derry Celtic mentioned before. People from Derry have heard of Derry Celtic. Quite a few of them haven't heard of St Colm's. Anyway, here we go. In 1900-1901 season, it was their first season in the Irish League. They didn't want a game. So, the next season, sorry, tell I, two seasons later, they finished fifth. That was the best ever, best ever um, placing they finished in the league. They finished fifth. They did that a few times. And then something happened. In 1913, Derry Celtic stopped. They changed. They changed from being a football team to a Gaelic team. I can't find any more history on them. Anyway, they also played at Celtic Park. We'll go to Celtic Park and we'll talk about Celtic Park. But before we do that, that's somewhere else they go. By 1928, Derry as a town didn't have any senior football. St Columns Court disappeared, can't figure out what happened to them. And then St Columns Hall, who were later um, Derry Celtic, they went and played Gaelic. Derry didn't have a senior football team. So where I am at now is that at the Peace Flame in Derry, it's a wee park here, and this here is the site of the City Hotel. The City Hotel formed a significant part in the history of Derry City Football Club. I'm going to tell you about it. Derry City Football Club was formed in 1928. Here. Not here because it's a park. But this was the City Hotel. A group of townsmen, sort of similar to Korean. They got together and they discussed basically a senior football team in Derry. Um, I can't find information on this, but I would reckon they seen it happening in Korean a year earlier and they're like, we want a piece of the pie. You know, Korean's only 30 odd miles away. So I think I think the people at Derry were like, you know what, if they've got a team, we need a team. So anyway, they joined the Irish League in 1929. And their ground was to be the municipal Brandywell Stadium. They got the permission of the London Derry Corporation, it was the Derry City Council. St Columns Court and St Columns Hall both played here. Celtic Park is a Gaelic ground in Derry, but before it was a Gaelic ground, it was a football ground. They played here from 1894 right up to 1900. When Derry City were formed, 
they moved into the Brandywell, which has been their home since since day dot, since 1928. But in the 30s, they had the opportunity to purchase this here as their ground. They don't own the Brandywell. They'll never own the Brandywell. They could have owned this. Derry says home's at Brandywell. We are in the Brandywell. It's always been their home. I'm going to tell you a few stories about Derry City. Derry City joined the Irish League in 1929. In 1931-32 season, they came runners up. That's very impressive. Two years in the goal, and they already finished runners up. 1933, they were given the opportunity to purchase Celtic Park, where we were just at there. Um, whatever happened, it fell through and it didn't happen, so they stayed here. Um, 1935, Derry City had their first major honours. They won the City Cup. Don't know who they beat because I can't find the history. Anyway, fast forward. 1949. Derry City won the Irish Cup. They defeated Glentoran. In 1964-65 season, Derry City won the Irish League for the first and only time. Now what was significant about that there was that Derry City would go into the European Cup. Now this is when it all starts going wrong for Derry City in the Irish League. And I'd like to know the truth in this here, but I can only go with what I have read online. So here we go. Derry City were in the European Cup in 1965-66. In the first round, they played FK Lynn from Norway and they beat them. It was the first time an Irish League Cup club had qualified for the next round in Europe. It was momentous, superb. However, Derry City were never allowed to play their second game. The IFA came and inspected the Brandywell, a lot different than it is now by the way, and they deemed it unfit to play in the European competition in the second round stage. Therefore Derry City never got to play their game. That was the start of the end for Derry City with the Irish League. Now the reasons behind it, and this here is going by what I found on the internet. Okay. The IFA prevented Derry taking part in the second round, stating the ground was not up to standard. It is thought that the IFA, who were a largely unionist uh, association, did not want a national team representing the Irish League in Europe. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. Um, if it's true, my word. Then came the troubles. Things started to get a bit dodgy. Troubles officially started in 1969, but before that, things were brewing. Things were brewing. Things weren't right throughout the country, especially Derry. I think anybody who wants to read their history in Derry, they can make their own mind up on on, on everything. I'm not here to side either way. I have my own beliefs. I keep them to myself. Anyway, at the start of the troubles, Irish League clubs were not affected. But then Linfield raised safety concerns about travelling to the Brandywell. They refused to travel to the Brandywell for a game. The AFA sided with Linfield and Derry City were forced to go to Corian to play the game against Linfield. Next season, Derry City were ordered to play their home games against Glentoran and Linfield, both away in Belfast citing troubles, uh, security concerns. Things got from bad to worse. 1971, the Ballymena team bus got attacked en route to the Brandywell. This was signalled the end of football at the Brandywell for Derry. The IFA demanded that Derry City play all their home games in Corian. Derry did this. But their fans didn't like it. There was too much hassle travelling down from Derry to Corian with all the security and checkpoints and all. It wasn't worth their while. They didn't do it. So, Derry wanted to return home. Poured it down, backed them. They said the IFA let them return. 
The IFA said no. The IFA put it to their vote. And here's the way the vote went. Five teams voted for Derry to return to the Brandywell. They were Derry, Portadown, Bangor, Cliftonville, Ballymena. Six teams voted against this motion. Linfield, Glentoran, Crusaders, Ards, Glenavon, Distillery. One team abstained. Corian. Derry left the Irish League. Now, to this day, I don't know why Corian abstained. It was 1972 73, I think. Um, I have looked in the history books, I've Googled, and I don't know why Corian abstained. Was it the fear of uh, the IFA? Was it the sort of more unionist Korean team siding with the other unionist teams? I don't know. I'm not going to guess. But um, Derry City now you play in the League of Ireland. But that story is for another day. If you like these wee history videos that I've started doing, like, share, subscribe and put your comments in. Tell me some history that I don't know. Cheers lads.